The video begins with Rusty, a polished and articulate chief deputy prosecutor in Chicago. Rusty, known for being the best in his field, addresses the court, emphasizing his duty to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt, urging the jury to do the same. The scene shifts to Rusty spending time with his wife Barbara and their two children, Jaden and Kyle, in their yard. He receives a call that his second-in-command, Carolyn Polymus, has been murdered. Disturbed, Rusty rushes to the crime scene, where District Attorney Raymond Horgan warns him not to enter. Ignoring the warning, Rusty discovers Carolyn brutally beaten and tied up. The murder is brutal and unsettling. Carolyn was bludgeoned to death and found hogtied, indicating a strong motive behind this atypical crime. At the office, Tommy Molto argues he should lead the investigation since Rusty was close to Carolyn. Nico Della Guardia, aiming to replace Raymond as DA, agrees. However, Raymond insists Rusty is the best lawyer for the job. Rusty suggests to Raymond that the person who killed Bunny Davis also murdered Carolyn, as both victims were tied up the same way. Raymond is surprised noting that Liam Reynolds was convicted for Davis's murder. Rusty, who worked the Reynolds case with Carolyn, raises the possibility they convicted the wrong person. Detective Alana Rodriguez also doubts Reynolds' guilt. Rusty speculates that Reynolds may have convinced someone else to carry out the murder in the same manner. Rusty interviews Reynolds, who is serving a life sentence. Reynolds admits the crime fits his style and even expresses satisfaction that Carolyn is dead, blaming her for ruining his life. Despite Rusty's probing, Reynolds remains tight-lipped. A flashback shows Reynolds being found guilty and attempting to attack Carolyn and Rusty while vowing to never forget their faces. Barbara is upset to learn that Rusty is personally handling Carolyn's case. She questions what will happen if their romantic involvement is revealed. Rusty assures her their relationship ended long ago. The scene shifts to flashbacks of Rusty's affair with Carolyn, where they cuddle, discuss Uganda, and she questions if Barbara was treating him the same way. Raymond loses the election, and Nico Della Guardia, who dislikes Rusty, becomes the new state attorney and demotes him. Tommy, now in charge, immediately questions Rusty about his fingerprints at Carolyn's apartment and reveals that she was pregnant at the time of her murder. When asked if he knows who the father could be, Rusty remains silent. Tommy presses Rusty again about the father's identity. Rusty denies knowing and insists they'll need a search warrant for a paternity test. Rusty later tells Barbara that Carolyn was pregnant and that he's now a suspect. Barbara, confused, asks if their affair didn't end a year ago. Rusty admits they briefly resumed their relationship recently, but it didn't last a week. Barbara is devastated and insists Rusty confess his affair to their children, who react with anger at how he hurt their mother. Rusty revisits the investigation of Liam Reynolds' murder of Bunny Davis, searching for a link to Carolyn's death. He notices something in the autopsy report and confronts coroner Herbert Kumagai, discovering there was a second sample at the crime scene. Herbert reveals Carolyn knew but kept it from Rusty, possibly due to contamination. Enraged, Rusty grabs him, shouting, We concealed evidence. Rusty visits Reynolds in prison, asking about the second sample. Reynolds quickly realizes Rusty is a suspect in Carolyn's murder and mocks him for his desperation when Rusty suggests helping could reduce his sentence. The situation worsens when police arrive at Rusty's home with search and paternity warrants. The test confirms Rusty was the father of Carolyn's baby, leading to his arrest. Raymond steps in as Rusty's defense attorney. In court, Rusty pleads not guilty, with his family present. Raymond argues the charges are false and that Rusty's reputation demands an immediate trial. Judge Little agrees. After being released on bail, Rusty is watching TV with his family when he receives a text, You were there. I saw you. He rushes outside to call the number, but there's no response. Showing the text to Barbara, she asks, Saw you where? Rusty replies, I wasn't there to kill her. Later, another text arrives, asking to meet. Rusty seeks Raymond's advice, who warns against it, saying, If you do this, keep it simple. Watch your words. And definitely don't say you hit Carolyn with a poker. That afternoon, Rusty meets the sender, Carolyn's son, Michael. Furious, Michael accuses Rusty of killing his mother. Rusty denies it and offers to answer Michael's questions, but Michael persists, 
revealing he has photos and videos of Rusty at the house the night Carolyn died, which he has already given to the police. Michael's evidence also proves he was there that night. Later, Rusty's kids urge him to take a plea deal, but he refuses, saying, why would I take a plea for something I didn't do? The scene shifts to footage from the night of Carolyn's murder. A photo of Rusty and Carolyn cuddling, a video of Rusty arriving at the front door, Carolyn closing the blinds, and a shot of someone biking away. Rusty zooms in, it's Kyle. It seems three people were there that night. When confronted, Kyle admits to visiting Carolyn's house out of curiosity about his dad's affair after the police reveal photos of him biking away. In court, Tommy passionately addresses the jury, urging them to focus on the truth rather than Rusty's motives, leaving Rusty feeling doomed. A doctor testifies that Carolyn died from head injuries, confirming she was pregnant with Rusty's child. Raymond pressures Herbert into confirming that no murder weapon was found at the crime scene, and after further questioning, Herbert loses his temper, mocking Raymond for losing his job as district attorney, prompting Judge Little to intervene. A forensic pathologist testifies that the absence of Rusty's DNA at the crime scene suggests it was meticulously cleaned after a sudden act of rage. Under Raymond's questioning, the pathologist draws parallels to the Liam Reynolds case, but Judge Little stops further discussion. Raymond implies Rusty's DNA could have easily ended up under Carolyn's fingernails. Eugenia, a co-worker, testifies about seeing Rusty and Carolyn kissing and arguing, revealing her disapproval and disclosing that Carolyn had complained about Tommy Molto to HR, prompting further questioning by Tommy. Judge Little warns that a voluntary manslaughter conviction with eight years in prison seems likely, but both Tommy and Rusty reject this idea. The judge also cautions both sides to handle Michael Caldwell carefully, noting that his father, Dalton, tried to prevent his testimony. Michael admits to watching Carolyn's house out of resentment for being excluded from her life and reveals that he confronted Rusty, believing he murdered his mother, but the judge reminds him not to present his impressions as facts. Michael also shares that Carolyn had expressed fear of a man at work, whom he believed to be Rusty. When Raymond questions Michael, he suddenly collapses, and Rusty immediately begins CPR. Raymond is rushed to the hospital, where he flatlines but is later stabilized. The doctor informs Lorraine that Raymond will fully recover, with no lasting damage, and is even receiving a pacemaker to improve his condition. In a meeting with Judge Little, Nico pushes for a mistrial, but Maya insists she'll take over for Raymond. Surprisingly, Rusty decides to represent himself. On the witness stand, Michael coldly responds to Rusty's condolences with, You killed my mother. Rusty questions whether Michael's exclusion from Carolyn's life made him angry, and Michael denies it was enough to kill her. Rusty then reveals texts from Michael to Carolyn saying, It would be easier if you were dead. Michael claims he was with his father the night Carolyn died, but Rusty questions his interest in Carolyn's past cases and bluntly asks if he or his father killed her. Judge Little demands justification for the accusation, and Rusty argues the police investigation was negligent. Tommy then calls Rusty to the stand, suggesting his questioning of Michael is a sign of his innocence. Rusty testifies, but is left speechless when Tommy brings up a past violent incident. Later, Tommy discovers the missing fire poker in his ransacked home, but despite it being wiped clean, Judge Little considers declaring a mistrial. Rusty, however, sees the fire poker as a way to create doubt, though Raymond warns it could backfire. Raymond uses a medical expert to establish that Carolyn died between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m., based on her last meal and the digestion timeline. Tommy counters by suggesting Carolyn never ate the food and questions the credibility of the defense's expert, implying she's biased because she gets paid by defense teams. Rusty wants to rest the case, and Raymond agrees. Rusty insists on delivering the closing arguments despite Raymond's concerns that he lacks a connection with the jury. Rusty argues that it's his life on the line, and he must do it. On the morning of his final arguments, Raymond advises Rusty to focus on the case details and avoid accusing Tommy or Dalton of being the real killer. In his closing arguments, Rusty admits to betraying his family, but insists there's no evidence proving he killed Carolyn because he didn't. He emotionally tells the jury he loved her and wants to find her killer, just like Tommy does. Rusty argues that Tommy's obsession with convicting him stems from a desperate need to solve the case, despite the lack of physical, testimonial, or forensic proof, 
and even a murder weapon. He highlights the reasonable doubt and hopes the jury will be honorable, even if he's not. In response, Tommy portrays Rusty as obsessed, not in love, and reminds the jury of Rusty's erratic behavior and interference with the investigation. He labels Rusty a desperate liar and murderer, showing photos of Carolyn's body to strengthen his case. Despite Tommy's arguments, Rusty is found not guilty. While Rusty remains stoic, Raymond and Maya are pleased, and Tommy is led away by Nico, looking distraught. Speaking to the press, Rusty declares that justice hasn't been served, blaming the justice system and Tommy for failing Carolyn by prioritizing a vendetta over the truth. At home, Rusty confronts Barbara, revealing he knew she killed Carolyn but tried to protect her by framing Liam. Barbara, shocked, denies it, but Rusty insists she must have dissociated during the murder. As Barbara protests, Jaden enters and confesses she was the one who planted the fire poker at Tommy's house, leading to the revelation that she confronted Carolyn, causing things to escalate. Barbara breaks down in tears as the truth unfolds. In a flashback, Carolyn reveals to Jaden that Rusty was the one pursuing the affair and that she's pregnant with his child. Jaden, overwhelmed, strikes Carolyn with a poker and flees. She later believes it was just a dream, but in the morning, she cleans the car and buries the weapon. Rusty assures Jaden it was self-defense and insists they will survive as a family. The scene ends with Jaden and Barbara making dinner together, joined by Rusty and Kyle, while Barbara gazes lovingly at Rusty. Thanks for watching.